Uh, INS committee meeting for July 15th, 2020 is now in session. Uh, roll call, Alder Weary is excused. I am the vice chair, now chair. Alder Scandal present. Alder Burnett. Present. Alder Gerlach. Present. All are present and accounted for, except for the excused Alder Weary. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve our agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Alder Gerlach. Uh, seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have an agenda for the night. I'll take a motion to approve our minutes from our last meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Alder Brunette, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, our minutes from our last meeting is approved. On to regular business. We ready? Kid Oak. Uh, number one, consideration with possible action on the Cruz, 311th North Henry Street to refund $470 in connection fees for mini storm sewer con connection uh, staff. Uh, this is very similar to a item that we had last month. Uh, huh? Mr. Kruth uh, is in the mini storm program for this year. He had applied for and received his connection permit uh, prior to the change in mini storm connection fee. So he was under the $970 connection fee. Uh, now that that's dropped down to 500, Mr. Kruth has requested that he be refunded the $470 to be reflective of the $500 total that other people are paying. Uh, I don't know if he's here. I don't see his name or anything. Uh, Alder Brunette. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Kinnear. What did we do last time? I, I for, we, did we refund? We refunded. We did refund. Yes. yes. Yeah, and to uh, Alder Gearlock's point, I think we kind of were afraid this would happen that the more keep coming up, and similar to the wheel tax, where we instituted the wheel tax, and then all the people that just paid a special assessment were coming forward looking for, you know, refund or something. Like, do you sense that there would be more of these? Is this about it, or? Uh, I I do an, I do anticipate there are going to be some more. When we did put out the notices, uh, there were a few people who uh, who did come in right away because they've been waiting for mini storm for some time. So they wanted to make sure that they didn't get left out. Uh, so they were very proactive and came in and got the uh, got the permit or the connection fee or paid the connection fee and got their permit uh, as soon as possible. So I do believe that there are more out there. Uh, I don't know how many. Um, but I, I do anticipate there are more out there. Well, if we approve one, then we got to approve, and out of fairness, another, and then many more after this. So, I mean, it's the hazard of what we did, I suppose, but that's all. Those are my only comment. Thank you. Uh, for myself, I know, uh, like with the last one we approved, I know uh, he ended up giving me a call thanking us and uh, he mentioned that there are much more, many more people on his block now, uh, very much interested in doing this, which is what we want to do. We want to get people doing this. So I think it's it's kind of it worked to lower the price. And I think if we had, um, I mean, this had been lower, and then it got raised. If we had kept it low, all these people would have been at paying this price anyway. So uh, for me, I, I, you know, it's just this year. Um, no one's going to be able to uh, from earlier. Uh, going to be able to come forward, uh, so I, I, I'm I'm okay with refunding people this year. Um, they uh, it doesn't come to a whole lot, even if we get ten people. Um, um, and I think it's what we for me. It uh, during this COVID nineteen, we're doing a little bit more from our government end to help people out, and we're promoting what we want happening, people connecting. And um, uh, I think if uh, uh, DPW ends up a little strapped, we just got to work a little harder to get them some money to make up for it. <laughs> that's our that's our job to well, uh, make so sure DPW's got the money it needs to get the job done. But I think uh, we can do that and uh, help out our citizens. 
during these tough times. So uh, I'm okay with with uh, uh, approving this. The one thing I will caution you on, though, okay, mm -hmm. and I tried I tried to make this point. <clears throat> excuse me, when we were talking about changing the connection fee for MiniStorm. From a stormwater management perspective, getting that water so it's not discharging across the ground and not creating a nuisance condition, there is no difference between connection to a MiniStorm and connection to the storm sewer itself. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's still a point of connection. That water still winds up in the storm sewer, there's no difference from how the water is being managed. From the property owner's perspective, they receive a point of connection at the property line. So there's no difference to the property owner whether they're hooked to a mini storm or to the regular storm sewer, okay? Right now, we have put ourselves into a very dangerous situation where somebody could argue that the $970 for a storm sewer connection should be 500 because that's what you're giving the mini storm for and then every point of connection we would wind up looking we would be losing $470 on every point of connection every new house every re rebuild anybody who doesn't have storm uh, right now but the lateral is extended and they go ahead and, and hook their sump pumps up if they're connecting to regular storm, it's 970. If they're connecting to mini storm, it's, it's 500. And as I've said, there's no difference. So we could be setting the table for some, some very serious financial issues. Uh, so just keep that in mind going forward. And we can, and, and though there is no difference, we still decide and we could say, well, uh, you know, we can make, we can make parameters any way we want as a, as a, um, committee and as a council. So maybe we can, depending upon how we feel, we may agree with that and maybe figure out a way that we can uh, do that and make up for the funds for uh, DPW or we're gonna have to start making up our guidelines as, as, as we see need, we need to, to uh, meet everybody's needs. So um, that's my take on it. Uh, any comment or anything from anyone else? Uh, I'll take a motion on this item. What do you want to do? Move to approve. Second. Move to approve by Alder Brunette, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that approved unanimously. On to number two. Yes. Yes. Uh, consideration with possible action on request to amend and update the stormwater utility ordinance to include and explain the impact trees have on stormwater retention and drainage and to provide a dollar credit to property owners who have trees planted or growing on their property in order to be consistent and fair with what the majority of the common council passed in November, 2019. If the ordinance and equivalent residential unit calculations are not adjusted appropriately, then forestry expenses should no longer be paid for by stormwater utility rates effective January 2021. Refer to staff at the April 29th, 21st committee meeting to modify existing ordinance to further define previous area in the ordinance and report back to committee. <laughs> Alder Brunette, uh, that's from you. Uh, any comment or just go right to staff? Well, Director Kinnear, if you just want to, you know, start and then I'll add my comments. Sure, sure. Um, so what we did is went back and took a look at section 30.20, which uh, creates the stormwater utility, uh, trying to capture what Alder Burnett was asking for. And rather than a credit for trees, the way the stormwater management or stormwater utility ordinance is written and how we calculate the ERUs, the ERUs are based on impervious areas. So any pervious area such as um, forested areas, yard and terrace trees, lawns, gardens, planned natural landscaping and undeveloped lands, those are not charged for stormwater management. There's a $0 charge for that. 
uh, but instead we charge for areas where water does not sink in. Uh, but recognizing that, you know, Alder Burnett's point that we don't necessarily discuss the trees and the stormwater funds are being used to fund the forestry department, uh, we did try to get that in there and make it very clear. So what we did with 30.20 was added two uh, pieces of, of text to the ordinance. The first is under subsection 1, subsection C, that the city further finds that pervious surfaces are preferable to impervious surfaces for managing stormwater. Accordingly, the calculation of ER equivalent runoff units, ERU, which are used to calculate the storm utility charges, as detailed in this chapter, shall be limited to impervious surface area. Pervious surfaces such as forested areas, yard and terrace trees, lawns, gardens, planned natural landscaping, and undeveloped property shall be exempt from the calculation of ERU and stormwater utility charges. Then we further went on because impervious surfaces were defined under the ordinance, but pervious were not. We added a definition of pervious. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, the language we added addresses uh, the concerns that Alder Brunette have, but we'll be interested yeah. to hear from the Alder. Yeah, I th thank you. Um, if I could, Chairman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, issue I had at budget time was that the stormwater utility ordinance did not mention the word trees a single time. So I, I thought it was appropriate to update the ordinance. I read it, and Director Grenier, thank you. It's, it's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, Obviously, I'm still not happy with the vote we made in November, but that's a past issue. But it makes me feel better that the ordinance is updated the way it should be, you know, through this committee. So thank you. I, it's 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 very nicely worded, and it makes it's it's much more transparent if we're going to be paying for the maintenance of street trees from the stormwater fund. So thank you. Good. Alder Gernlach? I move that we receive it and place it on file. Um, yeah. Or approve it, whatever we have yeah. to do. Approve. Yeah. approve. 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 Yes, yeah, so we want I to move that we approve this ordinance. <laughs> She's trying to kill it. She's yeah. trying to kill it. I knew it. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know uh, what I'm uh, talking about. Right. <laughs> Motion to approve by Alder Gerlach. And I'll second that. Second yeah. by Alder Burnett, and I'll, I'll third it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Good work, Director Grenier, on that. Uh, are we for number three? Yes. Uh, consideration with possible action on request that Department of Public Works looks into the stormwater sewer backup starting from East Shore Circle to California East Shore Drive. Referred to staff at the June 10th, 2020 Improvement and Service Committee meeting, Alder LaFave. Uh, she's not here, so Alder, uh, Alder, Director Grenier, you just got a raise. Well, uh, or maybe that's a demotion. <laughs> this, this did go back to staff, and to be honest with you, the only reason that we have it on the agenda tonight is because I wanted to give a status update. Uh, this can be, it can continue to be uh, held until we actually have data to report, but. Uh, I did want to give a, a, an update that staff started looking into it, and what we have is a rather complex interconnected storm system up there. It's a combination of ditches. Uh, the ponds actually at the wildlife sanctuary are part of this system, uh, and storm sewers. So it's a little bit complex in putting a model together that will reflect how the stormwater is managed up there and it's a little bit beyond the scope of, of the staff that we have. So we have contracted with a consulting engineer uh, that does some of our other stormwater management uh, activities for the city, and we're getting a consultant involved so that we, we make good decisions based on good data. So this was nothing more than an informational item to let you know we are working on it, but we've had to bring in some outside help. So just keep it referred to staff? Absolutely. So moved. Second. Motion by Alder Brunette to refer to staff. Second it by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staff, Merry Christmas. On uh, to number four. Yes. Uh, consideration with possible action on request for a status update on plans to address chronic flooding in the vicinity of Main and East Mason Streets 
and Department of Public Works staff to report back to the committee on feedback from designer or phasing the project held at the December 10th, 2019 Improvement and Service Committee meeting, Alder Nicholson. Beth? We have provided in the packet a summary memo that was prepared by Matt Heckenleibel, the utility manager. Um, as you know, we've been studying this area for quite some time. Uh, the last opportunity that we had to bring something forward was a storm sewer project that would bring us all the way from the low spot between Lime Kiln Road and Mason Street on Main, and it would be a large diameter box culvert system that would bring the water all the way back to near Elizabeth Street, and it carried about a $30 million price tag. Uh, I think we all agreed that the juice was not worth the squeeze on that one, given uh, the enormous cost and the, and the small amount of effect it would have. So we did engage the consultant, Brown and Caldwell, to take a look at some other uh, activities that we might be able to complete out here uh, that would have some, it may not have the, the biggest impact like, uh, like the big sewer did, but something to help try to alleviate that flooding, that chronic flooding issue down there. Uh, so what we came up with on page uh, two of the memo, you'll see that there are six, um, actually seven, uh, potential locations for stormwater management uh, facilities. When we went through the evaluation, locations one, two, and six showed that they were economically not viable. So what we're left with in near proximity to the intersection of Mason and Main are what we are referring to as sites three, four B, four A, and five. Three is actually the corner. There's kind of a strip mall uh, between Mason and Main near that sharp corner across from the Walgreens. This would be the grassy area that's between that strip mall area uh, and the signals. 4B is actually Wally's Spot Supper Club. 4A is a vacant parcel next door to Wally's that formerly, I believe, was a hotel. Hotel, yeah. And 5 is a vacant piece of property that's behind... Um, the Dollar Tree, sort of between the Dollar Tree and uh, Martin Hardware, which has never been developed. In addition to that, we've looked at the storm sewer in Main Street, sort of between areas three, three and five and 4A and 4B uh, for potential upgrade, as well as upgrading part of the storm sewer on Mason Street directly across from Cliff Wall. Um, that is anticipated to manage a <laughs> lot of the water that's right down at that, that area on, on Main Street that floods when we get high intensity water uh, precipitation events. Then we're also looking at a way to intercept some of the water that comes from higher ground and feeds into this storm sewer. And that's where we've talked in the past about potentially doing a project with storage under the parking lot at um, East Town Mall or various options there. Uh, on page four of the memo, you can see that there is a some improvements to the greenway uh, of the old Ellis Creek boundaries. And this is up sort of behind uh, there's a, it's at Auto Plaza Way and Van Beek Road, Manitowoc Road. Uh, so if you're looking at the memo, there's a box that calls out and it says Extended Creek and immediately above that you can see sort of a curvy road. That's Auto Plaza Way and at the top right of that graphic you can see, I believe that's the Nissan dealership for Gandrud. Mm -hmm. So what we'd be doing is improving the bottom end of this um, this greenway into another storage facility, and that's going to intercept the water that's coming from the uh, alpine area down that greenway before it gets. That'll detain that water and hold it back for a sufficient period of time to let some of the other water already in the sewer down at Mason and Maine uh, clear out before this water gets discharged in. So again, I've talked in the past about uh, 
essentially what a pond does is slows the water down so you reuse the pipe multiple times. The nice part about this is it is a phased plan so every little bit helps um, and we can do it over time so it's not like we would have to go out there and acquire all this property today and do it as one large project. We could go out, there's five or six homes I believe that are impacted by um, by that Van Beek storage option. That's the pond I was just talking about near Auto Plaza Way. We wouldn't necessarily have to go out and complete that immediately. We could wait until those homes become available or do it five years from now and that will help retain some of that water. We could go ahead and purchase uh, location number five and location 4A because that's vacant and build something there and that's going to give us a little bit more bang for the buck uh, and wait until you know let's say three years from now five years from now whatever all of a sudden Wally spot goes up on the market we see a for sale sign out there well then we can go and approach those folks uh, and do something at that time and every one of these that we do is going to have a little bit more effect on the area uh, so again, it's a it's a phased implementation that we can that we can take care of here, and what we're looking for is some feedback uh, from the uh, from the committee on that. Anyone want to jump in, or Alder Gerlach? Yes, this is my district. Yes, <laughs> I saw this today for the first time in my life. I realized it was held from December. I live one block from 4B. This is not just my district, this is my neighborhood. These are the people I know best. And I know Van Beek Road also. And um, I have no idea whether any of the people in District 3 know anything about this plan yet. Um, personally, I think that, I mean, this is an urgent need and, and I would like to get moving forward on it. But I really believe that the people who will be impacted need to have an opportunity to have a public hearing. Um, I know you held it from December. I'd like to see it held for another month so that we can set up a public hearing and let the people, um, you see, if you look at the, the map um, with 4A and 4B those houses behind, we're talking here about two huge ponds and no fence between the house and the pond. This is people's backyard. There's a fence there now. It's an old kind of rickety fence, but it would be gone and they would just be facing a retention pond and they would have to be thinking about putting up their own fence. Um, I'm, people want flood mitigation here and we need it and I'm in favor of it, but I do believe we have to bring the residents along. Um, I don't know the people on the Van Beek Road area as much but, um, I, you know, I, I'm interested in, in them also having something to say about it. So, uh, I don't know how you do that, but I suppose Director Grenier knows how one goes about having a public hearing on this. So that's what I would like to ask. Um, would you be interested in a public hearing or more of a public information meeting oh, to yes, a, that's what I mean a public okay, information okay. meeting yes see I always say the wrong words no that that's fine I, we just I want to make sure that we're clear that, and, and we're we're doing what we're supposed to be doing um, and of course an opportunity for them to respond to I mean, sure not just be talked to but to respond they're going to have strong feelings about this but the, they already have strong feelings about the flooding the only concern that I have is in the age of COVID get that would constitute a public gathering and i'm a little nervous about that um do you think that we could put together and i'd be happy to work with you on this to make sure that we're we're, we're getting the information that we need to get out but put together a short narrative and not have it engineer speak make it <laughs> common language so people can understand what we're talking about and basically say we're looking at plans to help alleviate the the flooding on main street that occurs during these large storms and what we're looking at is a phased approach that would include acquisition of property and building stormwater ponds 
at these look and show the same maps what you would and possibly show pictures of what our other urban ponds look like this is what it would look like once the pond is developed mail that out we could get a mailing list we can have IT help us pull all of those properties in the area generate a mailing list mail that document out to each of these folks and give them a comment form and ask them to return comments either in writing we'll give them an email address you know whatever various means of uh, of generating and then give them a date certain by which we'd like to have those comments back would something like that work for you well i um i think that that's a possibility um i think that that could also generate a lot of Oh, I'm thinking um, of something we dealt with with in, in Alder Vanderlee's district um, not too long ago where one person gets on the phone and calls others and starts riling people up and pretty soon it gets, you know, this is going to be a lagoon with a monster in it and it'll eat your children and that sort of thing. I will tell you, um, this the, the section um, 4A and 4B are in Old Preble neighborhood, which I might remind you is the neighborhood of the year and has had two parades during the pandemic. And we meet monthly in our park, which has just been renamed Old Preble Neighborhood Park. And um, we meet safely six feet apart with masks on every month. And I think that these people would come to a meeting in the park and we could make it safe. I think it would be safer for them to see your face and hear your voice and for them to, to know that I you know that I am there and approve of it and to listen to them I just think that would work better okay as, as long as we can do it and meet the social distancing guidelines and everything else I'm fine with it I was I had I had not thought of meeting in the park to be honest with you I traditionally we have done public information meetings here at City Hall in schools things of that nature and I was worried about getting people together in an enclosed space like that and how we were gonna enforce the social distancing. But if you've been successfully meeting with the entire neighborhood association in the park, I think that's definitely an idea we can take a look at. Yeah, Zoom just doesn't work for most nope. of these people. Nope. They just don't do it. I would like to try that. Okay. And you know, actually, we uh, I was gonna say we have a neighborhood meeting coming up August 10th, but um, we already have a speaker for that meeting but we could change it we could put this make this a part of the association meeting if you'd want to do that let us check the calendar if that would work for you and, and and I can make staff available for that I think that's a great idea okay thank you so would the be motion be to hold this I think so sure Hold it until, do we, I mean, hold it until the next um, Me. INS meeting? Yeah, the next INS. Okay, I would, I would move that we do that. Okay, Director Gurnier, if, would there be any portion of this that would, I mean, since we're, you know, we're in the middle of rain events and everything, uh, we could get another flood any time. Is there any portion of this that you think would be, uh, could be done quickly and, I don't. I don't think so. I think okay, what we're right. well. And, let 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 me. T uh, what what I would say is I think what we're looking at would be ultimately either we're going to do this or we're not. It, it it really is an all or nothing, mm -hmm. but it doesn't all have to be built at once. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. If the plan is approved, then the commitment on behalf of the city is to acquire all of these properties and ultimately get all of these facilities built because if you only build part of them, you're not gonna get the effect you want. Mm -hmm. But if much like Dan or Director Ditchite was talking with the parks plan earlier and we've talked about with the smart bike and ped plan, you've got the plan approved so you know where you're going and then you pick the pieces up as, as time and, and, uh, and funding allow. So what we'd be looking for ultimately, let's, we'll go out and get the public uh, input on this, and, and, but ultimately what we're gonna be looking for is either a decision to pursue this plan or to not pursue this plan, because if we only build three and five, we're not, that's gonna be wasted money. We're not really gonna see any impact down there. 
uh, and we will have spent a whole lot of money doing nothing. Okay. If, then if I may say with that in mind, um, we need to be sensitive to the people down on Van Beek, which is, um, I think, Wilder Park Neighborhood Association, if I remember correctly. Um, and I, I, some, at some point, um, they need to be brought into the conversation too. I don't know when you would recommend doing that now or pass this and then later on go to them and say, well, the park committee, the common council passed this. Now let's talk about raising wow. your house. Could, could no. you invite Wilder Park to your meeting? Absolutely. Yeah, I, want, I think that would probably be the most practical thing to do. I don't think it, I mean, you, you want input before. I think if you're doing it after, you're going <laughs> to. Yeah. That's not going to fly as well. <laughs> you know, now that we talk about this, uh, uh, Director Greenier, do you do you agree we should try to bring everybody together at one time? Yes. And Wilder Park is a great big park. We could meet there too. That would be fine. Um, the only thing I would suggest then is probably not do this at an association meeting. Then probably have a special meeting. Yep. Um, yeah. So maybe check your calendar, Director Greenier, and pick the dates that are good, and then give them to. Will do. Like, and, yeah. Okay. Uh, motion to hold. Yes. So moved. Motion to hold, Balder Gerlach. Second. Second. Seconded by Alder Brunette. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, that that is held. And I must say, Wilder Park, I've heard, is one of the wilder parks in the city. <laughs> Good one. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, are we on to... That's okay. Yeah. Uh, was that... We're on to five now, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, consideration with possible action or request for one, review of the Department of Public Works completion date expectations with possible action, and two, notifications to the Brown County Home Builders Association about the meeting as Department of Public Works staff will be meeting with Brown County Home Builders Association on December 12th, 2019, held at the April 8th, 2020 Improvement Service Committee meeting. This one also has to do with your district, Dr. Gerlach. Uh, Dr. Gernier? Uh, this is actually more of a housekeeping item. This was an open item that just needs to be closed out. Uh, to refresh everyone's memory, there were some there were some issues that had come up relative, especially to new construction, residential construction, uh, where we were having some issues with construction site erosion control, getting the site stabilized in green. Not necessarily the finished lawn, but getting the bare earth stabilized with some sort of a temporary vegetative cover. Second item was for houses that required sidewalk as part of the plat conditions and those sidewalks were not being installed by the developer or the builder. And <laughs> instead, when the, when the home purchaser wound up uh, with that property and we did follow-up inspections, we notified those homeowners that they were then responsible for sidewalks to go in uh, and that created some consternation. Alder Dorf, I think, remembers that. And then the third item that we had was uh, certificates of occupancy being issued to new construction and the driveway aprons were not installed. And that's not necessarily a life safety issue, but it is an erosion control issue. Um, and that it, it is an item between the builder, developer, and the ultimate home purchaser, but we wanna make sure that that communication is happening. Um, so we had taken some actions um, the way the ordinance cur uh, read at the time, we had the ability to withhold the certificate of occupancy if those items were not uh, taken care of, and that did not sit well with the Brown County Home Builders Association. So they reached out to Alder Nicholson to foster some communication. Now, last summer, late fall, it was right around this time, um, we did meet with the Brown County Home Builders Association to work on a, uh, on a plan to cooperatively address the issues. The first issue regarding construction site erosion control, the Home Builders Association provided us with a form that they had drafted, um, which would transfer the responsibility for that construction site erosion control from the builder to the purchaser. So both of them would sign off on that and that would be provided to the, um, 
to the buyer at the closing. So they know at closing that they are going to be responsible uh, either to put temporary down or to get the lawn in, uh, installed. They forwarded that form to us. We ran it through law department. Law department had some minor tweaks. We sent it back to uh, the Home Builders Association for their executive board to take a look at. And that's when COVID hit and getting people together became very difficult. But about two weeks ago, we received word back from the Home Builders Association that the form in its final format is agreeable to both parties. Uh, so a great, uh, a great example of how public-private uh, working together for a, a positive outcome. Relative to the sidewalk requirement and the driveway aprons, what we came up with, a new construction, you, uh, you sometimes will find somebody who doesn't use financing. They may have the wherewithal to purchase the property themselves, but speaking with the builders, they have, all, they have never seen a property change hands without a title company being involved. So you want to make sure you've got clean, uh, clear title to the property. When title companies are involved, one of the things that every title company will do is they will contact the clerk for that municipality and they will ask for what's referred to as a letter of specials. And that letter of specials identifies any liens or special assessments which are on the books against that property. The letter of specials comes out of a program that clerk's office uses and we have the ability to integrate the inspection department with the Robo City program if the sidewalk is necessary but not yet installed and if the driveway apron is not yet installed. It's a simple matter of clicking a box in the inspection form and that tells the letter of specials. It's an automatically auto-generated uh, letter that gets pulled out using databases if those boxes, either of them are checked, there's a simple blurb that gets inserted in the letter of specials that indicates sidewalk is required as part of this plat, that sidewalk has not yet been installed. It is your responsibility to have it installed. Please contact the Department of Public Works to coordinate that work. Same thing with the driveway apron because we wanna be able to inspect that to make sure that the driveway apron is in the right location, it's the right size, it's not oversized, which would cause a problem. The sidewalk's in the right location, it's at the right elevation relative to the curb, those kind of things. That approach was also agreeable to the Home Builders Association. We actually had that figured out and agreed to uh, a couple of months ago. So everything that we've been working with, with the Home Builders Association, we now have agreement on uh, between the two and we are starting to, uh, we've, we've actually started implementing that process. So again, this is more of a housekeeping item. Uh, it was something that was open and we don't wanna leave those open items uh, hanging out there. So we brought it back to give you the information, let you know what's going on and answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions? So receive and place on file? Sure. Motion to receive and place on file? So moved. Yeah, and I'll second. Motion by Alder Gerlach, second by Alder Brunette. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Good work, Director Grenier. Very nice. Uh, on to six. Yes. Consideration with possible action on a request to amend Chapter 9, Subsection 4, Green Bay Municipal Code, to address pavement assessment against residential properties located in mixed use zoning areas. This is Alder Stevens. I don't think he's here, though. Nope. Well, staff? Uh, a few months ago, Alder Stevens uh, approached me before council one night, and <laughs> relative to the Doty Street construction, and it's not his district, I don't think, but it was somebody that he knew or he had a connection with, the way that the assessment ordinances read, and you'll see this when we start going through the changes that were made, the intent of the, uh, the local vehicle registration fees. One and two family residential do not pay special assessments for pavement construction. Anybody else, so fourplexes, apartment buildings, commercial, industrial, uh, any other zoning category pays 50% and 50% is covered by the local vehicle registration fees. We had a situation on Doty where it was an office residential, a mixed use category, zoning category, which would go into other. 
but the only reason it was in OR was for a conditional use permit. There were three single family residential buildings on a common parcel that shared a driveway. So that's why they were in an OR zoning category. Although they functioned as three independent single family residentials, they did not receive the 100% exemption from the special assessments. And that definitely was not the intent of what we passed. So that gave us the opportunity or gave us a reason to go back and take a look at the assessment ordinance again. And once we started looking at it, we realized this assessment ha or this ordinance has not been touched in many, many years. There were terms in there, uh, and I, I guess that leads into just starting to go through the ordinance changes. The first change you see is under definitions, an FAU system and FAP system. Those terms are federal. That's uh, the federal, uh, federal aid urban and federal aid primary. Those terms have not been used since the early 2000s. That was under the federal FHWA funding authorization bills. It's like six funding authorization bills ago from the feds. So those really don't belong in the, in the, uh, in the ordinance any longer. Next we go down, uh, again, and any reference to FAP, FAU has been stricken. When we get down to residential zones, first residence, second residence, third, fourth, residential park, planned unit residential districts, those are no longer defined under our zoning code. Uh, so to make it consistent with the zoning ordinance, what we've identified is properties that are located within residential districts defined under subchapter 13.600 Green Bay Municipal Code or mixed use districts defined under subchapter 13.700 Green Bay Municipal Code for which the primary use is single family or two family dwellings. Uh, then there were some just the way ordinances are written nowadays, you have both the written and the numerical for the thickness of the pavements. Uh, so those have been, those corrections have been made. Under the assessment factors under sub N, it said that the assessment factor shall be computed to the nearest 10 cents. What we've done is we're proposing to take that to the next 10 cents. So if something comes out at $27.04, rather than rolling that back to $27, it would automatically go to $27.10. So we're just advancing to the next 10 cents. Um, we go into the summary table for assessment factors. Uh, again, what we have is we've stricken out any uh, reference to the FAP and FAU streets because uh, those don't exist any longer. Uh, added the words for 10% uh, to supplement the numerical. Uh, and then law department changed uh, how we described the 20% the admin cost uh, that's a added on to the actual uh, cost of construction. So those are the changes that we are proposing to the assessment ordinance to bring that more current. And okay. again, would entertain any, any questions. Any uh, questions or comments? So a motion to adopt. So moved. Motion by Alder uh, Burnett. You're muted. I can't hear you. Sorry. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. I can read your lips. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That passes unanimously. Are we on to seven? We are good. Okay. Consideration with possible action on a request by Wisconsin Department of Transportation to enter into a routine maintenance and operation agreement for the Ray Nitschke Memorial Main Street Bridge for state fiscal year 2021, July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Uh, director? If this looks familiar, it's because it is. Uh, <laughs> at our last meeting, we approved a very all, virtually identical bridge maintenance and operations agreement. Uh, that was for fiscal year 2020, which expired on June 30th. 
So uh, because the state fiscal doesn't follow the calendar year, uh, mm -hmm. we, we no sooner got the agreement passed than it expired. Um, <laughs> so uh, the work we put in was well worth it. Now we've got the language uh, established, so we were able to simply change the years and continue on with this agreement. Um, so we do, staff does recommend approval of this. We'll just bridge over to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion approved. Motion approved by Alder Brunette. Second. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. On to eight. We're ready. Okay. Consideration with possible action on request by Department of Public Works to award construction contract at a staff level and report the award at the next regular meeting of the Improvement and Service Committee for Sewers 5-20 South <coughs> Landview Road Sanitary Sewer. Director? This will be a project that's going to bid out that will be a sanitary sewer interceptor that will be out in the I-43 Industrial Park area um, that will service the TID out there. Um, with our summer schedule, again, we only have one meeting this month and one meeting next month, so it would, to wait until the next regularly scheduled INS meeting uh, and then council to approve the award would be approximately a one month delay in getting that work started and we're already pretty late in the year. So we're asking that the committee and council grant us the authority to award that project at a staff level. Uh, just by way of description of what we're talking about here, this interceptor sewer will continue across the Grandview uh, subdivision out to Grandview Road, then south along Grandview Road down to East Mason Street and that will open up, I, if memory serves, I, I don't want to be held to the number, but if memory serves, it's about 150 acres or so of land will immediately be available for development because it has sanitary sewer service. This interceptor also has long-term plans. We'll extend it south of Mason Street on Grandview Road to the south city limits, and then we can go east and west along Mason Street and service all the way back to Erie Road and to the east, we're actually able to go out just beyond the east city limits. So it is 100% TID funded. Uh, so I do like the fact that uh, the TID money that was generated within the district is being put back into infrastructure to allow for future TID development. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it's, it's nothing more than a timing issue given the, the meeting schedule. Uh, that we're requesting to have the ability to award that contract at the staff level and report it out to you. Move to approve. Move to approve. Yes, Alder second. Second second. Alder Alder. Brunette. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That passes unanimously. Whenever I read the language award, I keep thinking you should be given a blue ribbon with it. <laughs> I'm waiting for language major award, then you could give a leg lamp. Are we on for 10? We're ready. Nine. Oh, nine, 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 yep. Nine, nine, myself. not Report 10. Report the award of the contract South Bay Shore Dike Reinforcements. This is the long awaited contract to start repairs on the dike. Uh, put the contract on the street. We were incredibly happy. Seven very interested bidders, very aggressive numbers out there. Low responsive responsible bidder is Vinton Construction, who's done a lot of work in the city. Everybody who's on the on the list are contractors we have worked with in the past. So any of the folks who would have been successful in this, we'd have been happy, more than happy with. Uh, but Vinton came in at a at a low price. Uh, the awarded price, uh, the open as open price, of one million thirteen thousand five hundred twenty-seven dollars and ten cents. So we will go ahead. We've awarded that contract already. Uh, this is very similar to the item that we just took up. Again, because of the timing, we wanted to get those folks out there as soon as possible. So that contract award is in process right now. Uh, if we remember, you did, the Common Council did authorize us to bond with the stormwater utility, uh, $2.5 million for dike repairs. This comes out of that funding. 
uh, we will get as much work done as we can with the million dollars and that will set us up in good shape to evaluate how far a million dollars will take us and put the next contract out if additional work uh, needs to be done. So again, we're just simply reporting out that we have awarded the contract and we were extremely pleased with the interest and in the, in, in the, mon- the, the bids that came back. Uh, receiving place on file? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, moved by Alder Gerlach, second by Alder Brunette. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we receive it of that and place it d- 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 on file. 10? 10. A long awaited 10? Yes. Report of actions taken by uh, Department of Public Works. Um, A, granting licenses. Uh, one, sidewalk builder to Poblocki. Hope I said that right. Poblocki, yes. uh, should we, Do we need to take that one at a time or can we put it all together? No, it's a, it's simply a report out so you can take report it Report out, okay, yeah, okay, yep, yep, report out, yeah. And two underground sprinkler system to ADC maintenance LLC. So, that does anybody have any questions? We can. No, I seem basic. Receive in place on file. Motion. Motion by Alder Brunette. Uh, uh, second. Second by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Yep. We're on to informational director's report on recent activities of the Public Works Department. Okay, construction is in full swing. We've got projects going across the city. Um, Most of our major projects for the year have been bid out already and are under construction. Uh, This, the the two exceptions uh, in major projects would be the Grandview Road Interceptor project uh, that we just talked about uh, two items ago and a project to install uh, sidewalks within the Legends District. Um, As we know on game days, there's a lot of people walking on the streets over there, Uh, creates quite an unsafe condition. So we've been talking about uh, utilizing TID money over there to put sidewalks in. Uh, Staff has been working on that and we're actually uh, looking at bidding that out over the winter. There's a lot of sidewalk to go in and by this time of the year, We've been in contact with the with the sidewalk firms, and most of those folks are booked out through the end of the year. So getting numbers right now would be inflated numbers because um, they'd be having to work on overtime if they could do it at all. So we've talked to uh, Department of Community and Economic Development on that. They're in agreement, so we're looking at doing that one as a winter pro- or a winter bid for early spring construction in 2021. Again, that would be TID funded. Uh, Operations staff continues to be busy. The street section is out uh, doing a lot of street patching work, uh, joint ceiling, crack ceiling, and grass issues. It's just another banner year for grass, so we're getting a lot of complaints as well as taking care of our own city uh, lots that need to be mown. Uh, Traffic section continues to work. Uh, We're doing some emphasis on multimodal implementation this year. Uh, So they've been looking at implementing the connection from the new Webster Avenue corridor over to Bay Beach. Uh, This year we will be putting in bike lanes on Radisson Street and on Irwin. Uh, So we'll have full bike connection. That's easy to do because it's just paint. Uh, So we'll have full bike connection from Webster and University all the way up and when the East River Trail comes through then we'll integrate that along with the trail. We'll be able to get to Bay Beach, the Wildlife Sanctuary, UWGB and points beyond that. Um, ultimately, we would like to get something more permanent, and what staff is evaluating right now is whether or not we would like to put sidewalks in, or we're kind of leaning towards taking that 10-foot wide multimodal path on Webster and continuing that up. We can leave the bike lanes, potentially leave the bike lanes on for seasoned bicyclists, but having that 10-foot wide off-alignment path I think is more conducive than a combination of bike lanes and sidewalks for the recreational bicyclists or the, the, the families who want to ride their bikes out to Bay Beach. So we're, we're keeping an eye on that and, and working on those plans. Uh, we're also implementing some, uh, some recommendations from the bike ped plan and we're looking at converting Walnut at least between Webster and Baird. Uh, that's a four-lane roadway right now, really doesn't need to be. The traffic volumes don't, 
don't support that, so we're looking at putting that one on a road diet, and it'll be one lane of vehicles in each direction, and then the outside lanes, we'll paint a buffer in there, and it'll be a buffered bike lane, so we'll get full multimodal capability on, on Walnut Street, connecting downtown to East High and, and points out there. We are continuing to interview for a new sanitation superintendent to replace Debbie Epping, who uh, retired last month. Uh, and the utility division is, uh, is very busy, as they always are, uh, continuing with routine maintenance and operation, uh, televising and cleaning. And glad to report that we were able to make an offer to a new utility engineer to assist Mr. Heckenleibel uh, over there in getting some additional projects done. Uh, last I heard was the individual was due to go through uh, their physical today and hopefully pending positive outcome on that. Uh, at our next meeting, I'll be able to uh, announce the, the name of our newest engineer. Yeah. Any questions, comment yet, yeah, Oliver Lack? I have a question, please. And this isn't related directly to what you said in your report, uh, Director Grenier, but I just wondered when somebody um, goes into the city website and does that uh, report a concern yeah. and it's something related to DPW, who sees that? It depends on what the, what the issue is. Um, if it's a long grass complaint, that goes directly to the weed commissioner who's the street superintendent. If it's a pothole complaint, that also goes directly to street section. If somebody reports um, brush, that goes to sanitation. So depending on what the task is, uh, what the complaint is, the request for service is automatically directed to the responding individual, which helps cut down on it goes to this person and the email has to be forwarded to the next mm -hmm. to the next. Okay, I just wondered if you saw the pictures that I sent about the standing water at the end of Irene Street. I have not, but it's- That's a big problem. Yeah. We didn't to talk about it at the committee meeting, but boy, that's a big problem. Well, we talked about it at committee and we talked about it at council uh, a couple oh. of years, about oh, a year or two ago. Oh. The property owners who put the multifamilies in on LK Lane mm -hmm. as a condition of the approval for those multifamilies when they when they combined the lots after LK was vacated. As a condition of that CSM, they were required to put in a drainage system to address that water. They have failed to do so. What came out of the committee and council when we last discussed this was a requirement for them to do that again. So we also had been advised uh, through another party that we were, matter of fact, the individual who lives on Irene contacted us. Uh, so we went out, took a look, said, yep, this is still happening, and we passed that concern up to the inspection department for follow-up. Okay, uh, I, because the the gentleman who built the duplexes apparently is bragging to the neighbors the city is suing him, and I just wondered, you know, if something's going to be done. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Anything else from anyone? No. Then I'll just end with the uh, <laughs> Waiting long for grass it. complaints. Do they ever grow on you? Yes, they do. <laughs> Uh, I'll take a motion to receive the books on file. When can, get, when can we get Chris Weary back as chairman? <laughs> <laughs> motion to receive in place of file. He's watching this and taking an extended vacation now. Second. All right. Motion by Alder Burnett, second by Alder Gurley. Like on a favor. Aye. Our next meeting is uh, August 12th, 2020. Oh. Same bat date, same roughly bat time. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Removed. Second. Motion by Alder Brunette, second by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much, Director Greener. Thank Great you all. Out. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good job, Good job. Good. 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 Good.